Well, one thing you do do is if you're reusing the ring and pinion, which I'm doing, I need this bearing off here. This is the inner bearing, the race I showed you here a little bit ago, or last video, or whatever, same one here. The one that's chewed up was actually on that bearing. So this has to come off without destroying the pinion. So they make a, basically it's a, it, it, it's a bearing puller that kind of slides in between and bolts together and actually allows that to come off because these are pressed on. And uh, I do not possess one of those. And AutoZone did not have one to rent. And the ones I have are made to reach around and pull. Well, I could pull the cage into a thousand pieces, but it won't allow me to get to the inside structure. Now, well, inside structure I'm talking about is this right here. I don't need this cage, obviously, because it's going to be replaced. So you can destroy the cage. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, it's not as easy as you think, but it's also not very difficult. It'll start spitting bearings out all over the place here in a minute. I mean, the, the, the bearing, all that does, the cage is kind of hold the, the rollers in place. And uh, once you get to a certain point, it'll basically just start falling apart on its own. I know my hand's probably in your way. Now I'm not getting the bearing off this way. This is just the outer part that's got the got the roller part. And I'll show you what we have to get off that's pressed on. Maybe I'll show you that. that that would be a negative I know how I normally would do it, and that's my four and a half inch grinder. I would just cut the cage up a little bit and uh, you know, just score it, and then it just falls apart. I broke that part of it. idea what you're saying. I apologize if you can't see anything. Except the rollers fell out. Once all the rollers find out that fall out, then the cage will make it be a lot easier to get out of the way. There's a couple more. There they go. See, once it's out of the way, the rollers themselves, I just randomly picked one. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's just as just as ate up as the rest of it. Alright, what you're left with is the inner part of the bearing and you can see it's also chewed really bad now we need to get this off this is the thing that I actually is pressed on that's just the inner part of the bearing and um, what I usually do is I'm going to take it over to my four and a half inch grinder and I just start kind of grinding this out now you don't want to get into the pinion because you'll get down inside there and once that gets thin enough you give her a pretty good whack with a hammer and a punch and that thing will split and this thing will just fall off um, you could possibly heat it and it fall off that won't happen if I do it but that is another possibility is if you could get this hot enough it will swell this up and possibly you might be able to price something in there and get it out we can try it that way if you don't have a four and a half inch grinder um, you know but you do have the heat since you already had to have the heat possibly to take the brake caliper off or whatever I don't know if that would work for me um, but we can we can experiment with it just to see. 
I do have a torch if I really wanted it to get hot enough. So, well, let's just experiment for a minute. First, I gotta find my welding gloves. And you're gonna need a pretty good pair of gloves. Long gloves are not impervious to burning, burning your hand. So keep that in mind, but at least they're better than using those uh, little latex gloves that I'm using. I'm not expecting miracles here, so I've never tried it this way before. I thought maybe I'd give it a try instead of just immediately going to the grinder. There should also be a shim under this. Um, you don't want to just sit there and start beating between the, the pinion and that bearing to try to get those separated out because there actually is a shim in there. Uh, most of them so far I've ran into have, have had them. Um, and that's kind of a, I don't know if it's part of the preload or part of the you know, pinion depth or whatever it is. It seems like that's what it is. Or maybe it's just a space that they put in there uh, automatically, uh, you know, for expansion purposes. I'm not really sure. So I know it's getting hot because it's discoloring this uh, bearing, not the pinion. That's something I do not possess is a press. I probably should. But I've always found ulterior mo uh, ways to... Uh, I found other ways to make stuff work if need be. You know, one of those kind of deals. If you get her too hot, you end up heating up the pinion too and that ain't going to do you any good. I didn't expect that to work, but you never know until you try. Nope. Like I said, I'm sure it would work if you knew what you were doing or if you had the right, you know, I don't know. Well, I'm gonna head over the four and a half inch grinder and I'll show you before I knock that off what it looks like when I'm done grinding on it. I'm not sure if I'm far enough through it. I did get into it a little bit like it's kind of normal, but I do see a crack through it. So I already got a little piece knocked off. See if the crack gets any worse. Eh. I put my arm in the way. Yeah, bit's moving. I don't want to tear up that sham. Too bad. Uh, actually, I don't want to tear it up at all, but Not pretty. I got into it some. Wished I hadn't, but and I destroyed this shim. <laughs> uh, hopefully the new one's got it because I really deformed it. And about cut all the way through it. 
I hopefully, like I said, there's one in the kit. I haven't looked. But it's not perfect. Like I said, it's got to be better than it was. I said, I know there's better ways to take it off there, so you might have to do your own research and talk to different people and take it to maybe take it to a machine shop of some type. Maybe they have a way to press that off without destroying it. Um, like I said, I know there's other ways to do it. It seems like I've heard some people say that they could get them things really hot. And I don't remember if they dumped them in water or just turned it upside down and you know, give her a whack and the thing fell off. But don't quote me on that. They didn't, I didn't get it near as hot as I probably could have with that. But I was more concerned about um, making it where I couldn't handle it for a while. But anyway, it's not pretty. I'm going to clean it up. And um, it's still warm. And uh, then I'm going to put the ring on the carrier. And then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. Well, something that, uh, since I destroyed this shim, um, it came with several others. And in the new kit, it came with a whole bunch of different ones, actually. But I need to mimic this. Because um, when you think about this, this must have been in there specifically for a reason. Uh, I mean, as far as, like I said, I don't know if it's a spacer. I don't know if it's part of the preload, if they set this up. But you got to remember, once I put that bearing on, whatever's on there is on there. I can no longer change that without tearing that bearing up. So what a lot of people do is if you're doing this a lot, if you're doing this because you want absolute precision for something race or, or you know, off-road where it's going to be used a lot or whatever, it's a good idea to buy or to buy a second set of bearings. I know they're kind of expensive, but what you do with that second set of bearings now, mind you, if this was one piece, if the, you know, before I destroyed it, you saw what it looked like with the cage and the ball bearings. What you do is you go inside there and you actually open that up on the inside where that slides over that. With a, uh, well, you can use a die grinder or something to reach inside there and open that up some to when you slide that, it'll actually slide on and off without having to be beat or pressed. And what they're basically called setup bearings. And if you do one rear end specifically a lot, one specific, whether it be a 9-inch Ford or an 8-3-quarter Chrysler or 12-volt Chevy, 10-volt, whatever it is, it doesn't make any difference. Um, if you're going to do a lot of them, it's a good idea to buy a set. They actually sell them. Uh, I don't know what they cost. But to buy an extra set of bearings is not all that expensive. We're probably talking, you know, uh, in this particular case, you don't need the bearings for the carrier because those, you know, once they're pressed on, you don't put anything behind them, generally speaking. Your... Uh, the carrier set up side to side with a with with the spacers on the outside of the of the race, so that isn't a necessity for those bearings. But your pinion bearings, especially the inner one, buy one, grind that up, then you could swap this out. And if this becomes a problem, I put this together and this isn't working, I'll go buy a bearing because I'm going to destroy it. I actually, I'll have to buy two because I'll probably destroy the one getting it back off. Um, but anyway, with that said, I took this. This is where some of these I wouldn't call them specialized tools. This is a Sterrett. Don't buy Sterrett if you're only going to use them two or three times your whole life because they're expensive. But they sell different ones. Um, Harbor Freight has them. I think even like AutoZone and places like that have them. So because I've bent this thing and it's twisted, trying to get a, a reading this way isn't going to give me a very accurate reading because it's too bent and twisted. So I end up, I'm going to have to do it this oh, Let me make sure you're looking at what I'm doing here. I mean, I better get a pair of clothes too. So what I'm doing is find the flattest spot that's not concaved or bent or whatever, and then I'm going to take a reading on it, which is about 30, if I squeeze it down, it's about 34 thousandths, but about 35 is really what it is. So 35 thousandths is what I'm going to need. Now I've gone through, this thing came with a whole bunch of different thicknesses of shims, this kit did, and I found two of them together. If I put them together, I come up with 35 thousandths. No, I'm sorry, you're not even looking at it. So, I don't know if it's going to focus on it or not. So, anyway, two of them together made 35000 So, uh, that's kind of the idea when you go to look for a kit that's got the bearings. Make sure it's got different sizes of spacers or, or a, a variety of spacers. Because you could destroy one getting it off. You may need one that is not with the set. So, um, keep that in mind. And um, so, this is the one I'm going to use. Or these two, actually, I'm going to use for that. Now I'm going to clean this up, and I told you I was going to tell you what I'm, you know, show you what I'm, uh, what I do, and that is, and my wife absolutely hates it, 
But basically, I'm going to take this pinion, make sure it's all completely cleaned up, and I'm going to stick it in a baggie, like a Walmart sack or a trash sack or whatever, and I'm going to take this carrier, which I've already put the ring on, and I've cleaned it all up. I'm going to put this in a bag, and I'm going to take them in the house and put them in the deep freeze for 24 hours. Well, maybe 15, 16 hours, because I'll probably be out here in the morning. I don't know what time it is now, probably 2. So anyway, they're going to sit in the freezer overnight. And then tomorrow, I'm going to get set up. Here's all the new bearings. And um, this one's the inner pinion, which I don't necessarily have to do anything with it. Or uh, outer, outer one, I'm sorry, the one against your, uh, your drive shaft. This is the inner one. This is the, the one I just took off that I cut all up. So what I'll do is this one and these two, since they go on the carrier, you know, each one of them going the outside ring of this carrier, I'm going to put them in my hot plate you see sitting over there. Well, it's hot, uh, hot plate. It's actually a uh, toaster oven. Put them about 150, 200 degrees. Let them sit in there for a little while. And then I'll go grab one of these out of the deep freeze. And then we're going to put bearings together that way. You heat one up, you cool one way off. You don't have to have a press. Now, here's the thing before we get started on that, though, because they may not just fall on. Sometimes they do. Most of the time, you're going to have to find something to beat it on. So you take this bearing. Hang on. Nobody I want to talk to. Um, so what you end up doing, to make sure that you have what you need, and mind you, the, the race are going to be in. Uh, this goes on down. If you remember seeing that, that goes on the pinion that way. So I need to find something that's long enough to go over the pinion but fit on this inside race right here, whether it be a piece of pipe or something like that, not on the cage, in the center section right here. This is what you want to tap on. You don't want to beat on this cage. And what that'll do is, so when I drop that on, if it doesn't fall all the way down where I want it, and those, mind you, it's going to have those two shims you saw I had underneath this. If I don't go on where I want it, then you have an option of putting something over top of it and tap it down the rest of the way, beat it, however, however it is. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, I can always take it to, to a, uh, there's a guy here in town that's got a press. And uh, I'll just have him push it on the rest of the way. Now these here, obviously they won't be on the, uh, you know, these won't be on. So it's, it's going to be kind of the same setup. One of these, you know, it's going to have to go on this direction. Make sure you put them out, which we'll talk about that tomorrow when I get started on this. But basically it's going to be the same setup. You want something that's going to fit on the inside of that because once you stand this up, it's probably not going to fall on it and they're going to be hot. So you're going to be fighting them with a glove and everything like that. So make sure you got everything you need prior to starting doing this. And we'll get into that tomorrow. So uh, we'll see you then.